Hey Astro Kids, and welcome back. And this is your horoscope for Mercury entering into the sign of Gemini from July 2nd through July 16th of 2022. Let's go ahead and jump right into this. So up on the screen here are the details for this transit of Mercury entry into Gemini. And Mercury is the ruler of Gemini, so this is its home. It feels very comfortable here. It is very relaxed here. And so we're not going to see a lot of extremes in the way that Mercury is behaving. It is very relaxed here, similar to how we behave in our own home. And so Mercury in Gemini is an excellent placement for communication, for negotiation, for business, for deals. It gives a very calm, relaxed, and very skilled way of communicating. So this is an excellent position. Now, as Mercury comes into the sign of Gemini, it will come into a conjunction with the sun that's been here for some time. And so the sun is far ahead in degrees of this Mercury. So we're not going to see the combustion till the end of this transit here of Mercury Gemini. As Mercury comes into the conjunction with the sun, this is an excellent time for using your intelligence, using all of your skills to your ability. The sun gives consciousness, clarity, enlightenment so this is a great time of clearly understanding and using your wisdom and intelligence to your advantage this mercury is all about communication skills the confidence to take the initiative it is all about developing yourself It is all about doing multiple things at once and this gemini is a dual sign it gives this ability to do multiple things at once and so there's a lot of mental energy a lot of intellectual energy coming into this transit we're also going to see mercury receiving an aspect over from k2 so once again this is a great time of using your raw talents your creativity your natural skills to your advantage this is an excellent time for using any kind of talents that you've already developed to get towards your results your success especially in the area of business remember that k2 is not just about taking things away k2 also holds the flags of victory and so this is an excellent time for your success for your progress in any kind of business skills learning that you are doing now also mercury is going to come into a conjunction with venus when venus shifts ahead into gemini as well on the 12th of july and so as venus comes to join this conjunction this is a great time venus and mercury are great friends with one another and both of these are planets that are geared towards the material world that are geared towards business venus gives excellent charm and business skills and so this is a great combination once again for your business skills for your communication skills for any kind of talents or skills that you are picking up around the 11th through the 16th is where we're going to see this combustion and it will be stronger as we get closer to the 16th here at the end of this transit because remember that mercury is catching up with the sun it is behind it so as Mercury comes closer to the sun, this is where we will see this combustion start to build. And this is a very tricky time when Mercury disappears into the rays of the sun. And so this is a time where you want to watch your ego in terms of your communication, thinking that you are better, that you have more skill, that you are actually doing better than you are. This false illusionary aspect of this can come into play. This is also a time where you want to watch how you are communicating. This can give a very aggressive, impatient way of communicating as Mercury is getting burnt up by the sun. So we can see some frustration, some ego issues flaring up as Mercury comes into this conjunction with the sun. This is all going to be centered around your communication, your intelligence, your business skills. This has everything to do with this Mercury influence. Now, Mercury also is going to transit through three different Noxatras. So there are three Noxatras found within the sign of Gemini. 
And the Noxatra that is the most like Gemini is going to be Ardra in the middle of Gemini, where it is a Rahu ruled Noxatra. Because remember that Rahu is very similar to Mercury. They both have this very clever, very cunning way. They're both very good at business, very good at dealing with the practical areas, the materialistic areas of life. And so this is an excellent placement for your business skills, for your ability to make things happen in your favor as Mercury comes into this midpoint of Ardra. At the beginning of this transit of Gemini, this is where we can see a lot of turbulent energies where it comes into this mixture of Noxatra where there's constant searching, constant seeking, constant restlessness occurring. And so this can be a very difficult part of Gemini for Mercury to transit through. This is definitely a time where you want to do your research, you want to develop your skills, you want to look into all those areas where you are developing your talents, seeing what works for you, seeing what doesn't work for you, trying to find that path of how you're going to move ahead with your goals at this time, this beginning part of this transit. At the end of Gemini, we see another Noxatra of Ponavesu, which is all about achieving things and reaching good fortune, but through trial and error. It is symbolized by the magical bow and quiver where the arrow returns after being shot. So giving us multiple chances, multiple times. It is all about the reconstruction, the re-innovation. And so as we come closer to the end of this transit here, this is time to look at what needs to be changed, what needs to be done again, what needs to be reviewed, especially as Mercury comes into the combustion, disappearing into the rays of the sun. This very fiery, intense energy is an excellent time to look over everything, look at the details. Instead of trying to charge a ahead with this energy instead of trying to get towards your goals forcefully with this fiery combustion this is time to actually sit to listen to contemplate to understand on a deeper level to trust in your intuition to take that time to reflect and meditate on everything that you are building that you're working towards that you are putting to the test to receive these results now let's go ahead and talk about how this horoscope is going to affect each of you according to your zodiac sign and just a quick disclaimer i am not using western tropical astrology this will be based on vedic astrology which is using the sidereal zodiac so if you are not familiar with what your sidereal zodiac sign is there is a calculator down below in the description so that you have the correct information Another disclaimer is that this is not according to your sun sign. These horoscopes will be according to your moon sign and your ascendant sign. These are the most important points in the chart to read from. The moon sign is going to show you everything in accordance to your mind. It is what you are perceiving, what you're reacting to. And the ascendant is showing you how the karmas and the experiences in your life will play out. So this will not be according to your sun sign. Let's go ahead and start off for those of you with an Aries moon or Aries ascendant. This will be Mercury transiting into your third house. Excellent position. Mercury is controlling over your third and sixth house. And so this gives excellent problem solving capabilities, excellent work ethic and skills and so this is a great time to develop any kind of skills that you want to work on it is a great time to focus on your work to focus on your responsibilities everything that you are trying to make happen and this is especially true as k2 is in the seventh house of your chart making this fifth aspect over to mercury and so this is a great time to shut out all of the distractions of the world and to focus really on developing your skills and working towards the purpose that you want to achieve. For those of you with a Taurus moon or Taurus ascendant, this will be Mercury transiting through your second house. And so this is an excellent time for business. Remember that that second house has everything to do with your finances, your resources, 
It is how you are sustaining yourself. And Mercury is a very positive planet in your chart as it's controlling the second house along with your fifth house. And so this is a great time for any kind of skills, talents, anything that you want to express, that you want to work towards at this time. That fifth house being activated is going to be excellent for your projects, for any kind of speculation, any kind of talents that you're trying to put out into the world. This is an excellent time to utilize your knowledge, your creativity, all of your skills to your advantage to bring wealth in. For those of you with a Gemini moon or Gemini ascendant, this will be Mercury entering into your first house of self. So this is a very prominent transit. We have the sun that is already here giving you a ton of confidence and self-esteem. Venus is also going to come in here as well. So this is definitely an excellent time where a lot of your charm, your charisma is coming to the surface. This is a great time of using this to your advantage to be successful. Remember that the sun is controlling over your your third house and it's in your first house of self so this is excellent for your confidence for your ability to take the initiative those of you who are entrepreneurs who are artists who are doing your own thing freelancers this is an excellent time to express yourself for those of you with a cancer moon or cancer ascendant this will be mercury entering into your 12th house it's going behind you so this is a time to go into deep contemplation to take some time to go in to be careful of any kind of hasty decisions any kind of sibling conflicts or rivalries any kind of difficulties that you're having with your close relatives you want to take the time to sit with this to contemplate this and to find a sense of peace and closure so this can definitely be a time of clearing of ending of bringing things to a finalization you want to be careful of any kind of contracts dealings that you're getting involved in looking over the small print is very important for those of you with a Leo Moon, Leo Ascendant, this will be Mercury entering into your 11th house. Very prominent position. Remember that Mercury is controlling your two money houses. And so this is a great time for business, for work, for wealth, for prosperity coming in. Mercury is controlling that second house of your sustenance, of your finances, your resources, along with this 11th house of your large gains of your social groups. And so this is especially a time of networking, of making connections with others, taking opportunities that will take you to the next level. For those of you with a Virgo moon, Virgo ascendant, this will be Mercury transiting through your 10th house. And so this is a huge time for your career. You may be called on for some new responsibilities for something big in this area of career. This is a great time to pounce on new opportunities. This is a great time to take up a new skill, to show off your skills in your career, in the public front. This is an excellent time of using your communication skills. Anyone who is in writing, who is in the media, any kind of career that is dealing with communication, this is an excellent time to put yourself out there. For those of you with a Libra moon, Libra ascendant, this will be Mercury entering into your ninth house. Excellent time for studies. And Mercury is a great planet for many of you. This can be a great time for your studies for those of you who are in school, but also for your spiritual studies, for your philosophical studies. Any kind of foreign languages that you're learning. All of this is excellent to hone in on at this time. This Mercury retrograde could take you traveling. It could take you on a new adventure, exploring new options, being exposed to new topics and hobbies in your life. For those of you with a Scorpio moon, Scorpio ascendant, this will be Mercury entering into your eighth house. Very intense placement. Remember that this eighth house is all about dramatic ups and downs. And Mercury is ruling over your 11th house of gains as well. So this can be a big time where you can see some major fluctuations in this area. This can be a time where you can suddenly see your wealth going up where you can suddenly see it going down and so this is definitely a time to deal with those tides to go with the flow of this changeability this mercury in this eighth house also could mean that this is an excellent time of communicating with your spouse with your families of your spouse 
everyone who is close to you dealing with all of your finances dealing with all of those menial problems and practical details within your life taking care of that at this time is very important paying attention to the details of your health and how that is affecting you is very prominent for those of you with a Sagittarius moon, Sagittarius ascendant, this will be Mercury entering into your seventh house. And so this is an excellent business time. Remember that the seventh house is all about other people. It's all about how you're interacting with others. So Mercury in the seventh house is opening you up to the business world. It's opening you up to the marketplace, to many people coming in, connecting, relating. So this is an excellent time for those of you who are looking for new business opportunities, who are looking for new experiences to succeed in your work. Mercury is a very tricky planet, of course, as it controls over your 10th house and your 7th house, but this is a huge time for your business success. Any kind of disagreements, arguments coming up in your relationships, this is an excellent time to deal with this, to work through this, and you can see some potential problems because of this Mercury being a very challenging planet. For those of you with a Capricorn Moon, Capricorn Ascendant, this will be Mercury entering into your sixth house. You can find yourself focusing on the small details, on the mundane factors of life, focusing on your health, focusing on how you're dealing with all of the day-to-day -day issues in your life. This can be a time to work out some legal issues, to work out any kind of contracts, dealings that you are connected to. For those of you with an Aquarius moon, Aquarius ascendant, we have Mercury that is entering into your fifth house. Great time to express yourself. This fifth house, remember, is all about the stage. It's about politics. It's about performance. It's about creativity, intelligence, teaching. And so this is an excellent time to put your skills on display. This can be a huge time where you're teaching, sharing information with others, where you are working on some project, where you are studying, doing research. All of this is huge at this time, especially with the Mercury controlling over that eighth house. Any kind of dissecting, digging deeper into research, understanding things on a deeper level, this is huge at this time. You can see some big results in this area. And of course, that eighth house is a money house, so this is a great time to put your skills to use, to put your projects, to put your creations out there and this can be great for bringing in wealth. This could also be a time where if you are involved in education, you could see some fluctuation happening there. Hang in there, see it through until the end. Don't give up with this eighth house involved. For those of you with a Pisces moon, Pisces ascendant, Mercury will be entering into your fourth house. And so this could be a time where you're very restless, where you are wanting to move around, where you're wanting to change your residency. There can be a lot here where you have a ton of mental energy, a ton of restlessness happening. This is a great time to occupy your time with something that is useful, something that's practical, something where you can hone your skills. This can be an excellent time for learning with this Mercury energy. Mm -hmm.